I'm going to quickly go over brushes. And this, no, this is not going to be an ad for a certain brand or anything. But I had did, I've been using these quite a bit. Because these are Humbles. Now, the reason I got these, pretty much, for my trials and testing and playing, is because of a number of reasons. One, they're extremely affordable. We're talking four, four to five bucks a pack. Other uh, side from the Palpo, which is their Sable, uh, those were about nine something for a pack. But it gave me an opportunity to try brushes of, of the similar size, but different hairs, and see the difference myself. You know, kind of find what may, I'm getting, you know, what's working for me. That's the reason that I got these Humbrels here. Plus, you can get them on Amazon. If you get $25 worth of stuff, you can get free shipping. You know, to throw in a model, throw in some packs of brushes, and you got free shipping, you're paying like five bucks a pack. The other reason is that the sizes that they put in here are ideal pretty much for uh, detail painting uh, automotive. I mean, they're just in that perfect range. They got just the small is just good, perfectly small enough. The larger is just perfectly large enough for objects, uh, you know, that you would hand paint on a, on a car model. And then I went and replaced my... Uh, Flat brushes, which were low Cornell, um, they're okay. They're kind of stiff, though. I just just grabbed a pack of these back when I bought some brushes at Hobby Lobby, and I got like I don't know, it was like twelve brushes for five bucks or something. But uh, they're a little stiff. They're synthetic. They do have their uses. I found that they're pretty good. Uh, these larger ones that were in the pack are handy for like decals and things like that, putting down future stuff. So I still kept a few of these but I wanted to get some quality just just a batch of quality flat brushes that are of, of, you know decent quality so I picked up the testers premium flat brush pack they call it it's got three flat, flat brushes in it ideal sizes uh, I, these are some some of the sites say these are sable I don't know if they're sable or not I'm not really hung up too much it's got to be sable or anything but as long as they work good that's what matters to me Umbral has a set of these uh, flat brushes out as well. They weren't on Amazon and I didn't get them, but I think I will get a pack of those as well just to compare and try, you know, they're, they're, it's a relatively cheap ex uh, expenditure. So just to try them and see if I like one better than the other. Because my goal is just to get down to one type of, of round brush that I'm going to just stick with from now on and one brand or whatever flat brushes maybe I'll use the Humbrols on all that or I'll use testers or whatever they're easy to get, they're cheap, they got the ideal sizes so I like these little sets of, of the hobby type brushes like this I pick up a set of the Atlas uh, brushes which are really tiny there was actually only three brushes in here, I've got a lot more in there now but uh, it was a set that had the 10 aught, the 5 aught, and the 0 that are really tiny detail brushes because I just wanted to try the uh, Atlas brand. Uh, they have a million different sizes and shapes and compositions, sets and everything. Atlas is just a huge uh, manufacturer. These are their Red Fox Sable. So I don't know, you know, actually what the real com, you know, what they are, if they're fox hair or sable or whatever, but these are really tiny brushes, but they do have nice points. And what I did is I just took all my brushes that are from zero and below and I put them in this tube now. And so when I put this in my cup, I kind of have my brushes a little more separate because I've probably got about 20 brushes in my cup now. So just to kind of separate them a little bit, I've put all anything that was zero and below, really tiny pointed brushes, I put them in this tube that the Atlas brushes came in and I have this sitting in my cup. So that's why that's in that tube like that. What I had been using is like I showed that low Cornell, those flat brushes, and then I got these. These are Westwater. Now, again, I think Hobby Lobby, I bought a huge set of them for like $4. Not the greatest brushes. They splay. They don't have a good point. I mean, they were okay, but just not. Now that I've been trying these other brushes, uh, they just, just weren't doing the job. Now, I'm still relegating a few of these for like painting metallics and things. So I hung on to some of these, but... And then I bought a set of those, the, I think some other people showed these. I like the handles, but the, um, you know, this is that set you can find in Hobby Lobby near the models. 
as hobby brushes or whatever. But these are those long, um, uh, real long bristle brushes. These are like script brushes, liner brushes. Some people call them rigger brushes. They're just not ideal for detail painting at all. These are designed to draw long thin lines. They hold a lot of paint and with a light touch you can draw a thin line but as soon as you press on it or anything the hairs splay out. The reason they call them riggers is because back way back when in olden days you know the ship painters which was real big at some point they needed a brush to paint rigging you know and so they came up with this long brush that came to a, a, ta a good, fair good point held a lot of paint and you could sit there and you know draw a long line so I don't see the benefit of that with with model cars they don't have any control if you're trying to paint actually paint something with them you have no control they're so long and and, and the hairs splay and then you, it's just this was causing me a lot of trouble you know using trying to use these brushes it's still it's a this is just a synthetic it holds but it holds a good point it's and it's just a plain old testers brush man but uh, you know that thing will hold a point still it's been through tons of abuse I've used every kind of paint you know I finally relegated it to my metal colors but um, I would take this any day something shorter that has a little bit of belly holds some paint holds a point this is this blows away any of those rigor brushes so just that one brush I can do anything that I can do with any of those others so I wanted to try these different formulations of brushes that different hairs and stuff and, um, their lowest, their low end range is the economy brushes. It's the Evoco, which is this red set here. Um, it's just general purpose. They call it natural hair. I don't know what kind of hair it is. Human hair, I don't know. Um, not a bad brush. Not a bad brush at all. Uh, they do hold, you know, their shape fairly well. Uh, this is the largest one out of the set, um, and they paint nicely. Uh, they got a nice kind of spring, but they're a little soft. Um, uh, but they do a fine job and for f less than five dollars a set it's uh, hard to beat they're, they're, it's the ideal sizes you need you're not getting a bunch of sizes and things that you're just not going to use you know um, the Calero is kind of their mid-range for acrylics or enamels they're synthetic and uh, let's let me grab one of those this, this is the largest one just to show uh, they hold their point really nice they have a nice good stiffness to them uh, I am love these Calero brushes. I think these are, in my opinion, the best that they have. As far, I mean, these are just great brushes. Out of all the brushes that I have in my cup now, uh, these Caleros for for five bucks. This set, uh, I would highly recommend. Uh, they've been just wonderful. I've been painting the heck out, you know, painting tons of stuff with these brushes. Just didn't feel like setting them down and grabbing something else and trying them because I was getting such, having you know just such good repeatable results with this set of brushes. And then they've got their their actual more higher end. These are sable hair, uh, and and they call these their enamel painting brushes. Uh, the only thing with them is that the larger ones just don't seem to hold their point. You know, now if you wet it, um, it kind of gets more to a point. But um, I've just not, you know, I don't know. Um, not that blown away by these, to, to be honest. Uh, I'll admit I haven't been using them as much as these others, but um, the smaller ones seem a lot better. They're, they're pointier and hold their point, but that large one, maybe I got a bad one or something, but it just won't hold a point. It splays out. So I'm kind of on the fence with this larger sable, and I'm getting such good results with this Calero that... Um, I don't know, I just don't have a need to jump up to a sable or whatever, you know. The other brushes that I have are a few of these stiffer brushes. Now these came from, I, I think this was a, from Nail Art Set or something. Uh, I don't even remember where I got this brush, but it is a stiffer bristle and it's kind of just worn out. Um, there's That's my dry brush. I mean, you can, you can hear that thing. Uh, great dry brush. I have this this brush alone. Just this little tiny brush. It's the perfect size. I don't know what size it is. There's no writing. It's got just a bunch of flowers on it. But that's my dry brush. And maybe I'll show a little of that dry brushing. I know there's a lot of videos on that. So maybe not. I don't know. Just what I've gotten and picked up. And to, just, to, just to kind of have a control over uh, just 
finding sets that are cheap, easy to get. Uh, I can easily replace a set. I can easily find them. I can get repeated, you know, stick with just hobby brands, not spending a lot of money. That's why I'm kind of using these hobby brand brushes. And for me, for car modeling, they're plenty good. Now, if I start getting into miniatures and all that, yeah, then I'll start looking at the Da Vinci's and things like that. You know, where brush painting is like the major part of your hobby, you know. But for car modeling, these are perfectly fine. And I will go ahead and say that I would highly recommend this Calero set from Humble if you can get them. You won't be disappointed. Very nice brushes. The only weird thing about them is they have like a reddish color. And when I first wet them um, and all that, it was like it came out of it. It had like a tint, a reddish tint to them. So I ended up washing the brushes before I used them the first time, and it, and, and it had like this pink color in them. I don't know if that's a dye or what the deal is, but it had no effect on the, the actual brush themselves. But it was just an odd thing I noticed about them. And, but then I didn't notice about their other brushes, or any other brushes that I have, actually. Uh, one other thing that I'll point out that I something I stumbled on on the internet is that uh, when you get your brushes, they'll including these brands, um, they'll have that plastic tube on them for shipping, and the brush will be stiff. And from what I understand, that's just a, a type of a wax. I guess it's just to keep the brush in shape during shipping and protected. Uh, from what I understand we should avoid at all costs taking the temptation to break the bristles when you get it you know pull the top off and break them that will damage the brush do at all costs avoid doing that uh, the better thing to do is take the brushes and lay them in some water or in some soapy water or in some mineral spirits or whatever and let that stuff dissolve off of there and wash them out uh, from what I understand it is ex especially if you're buying higher-end brushes don't give some artist a heart attack by grabbing your brush and doing that because uh, you know those guys freak out over that kind of stuff another thing is for me personally I dispose of that tube because I've damaged too many brushes <laughs> trying to put that tube back on and catching hairs and stuff plus it doesn't let the brush air out and dry natural you know quick it's 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 kinda trapping all that moisture from washing in there there's really no need, in, from what I see, at least on my workbench, to have that plastic tube over the top of all my brushes. I mean, my, my cup is over out of the way. I'm not, like, jamming my hand over the, my cup and stuff all the time, potentially damaging the bristles somehow. Uh, that's a shipping tube. Uh, but personally, I don't think there's a need for all that. Um, and a lot of the higher-end artists, people that I've been watching online and stuff, they all toss them out when they get their brushes, so... It's, it's more or less really a shipping tube. Um, if they dis wanted you to use that, they give you, you get the nice clamshell type deal with some of the really high-end brushes that keeps you from accidentally damaging the brush. But that's up to you, whatever, you know. You like the tubes, you want to use them, that's fine. Um, just, just my opinion, a lot of it. And, um, don't, not really a whole lot more to say about all that. I'm just going to do some brush painting, show some stuff, make some paints, do some brushing. Uh, brush some things that I might normally spray, but go ahead and brush them just to show that you can get a good finish just with a little bit of a uh, few tips and a little bit of practice. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to brush some enamels just to show that it can be done. Um, I I've actually had some people tell me enamels are not good for brushing. Well, that's totally untrue. <laughs> I mean, I think most people know you can brush enamels just fine if you mix them right and everything.